Why did some paleogeographers fill in the Indian Ocean? Well, throughout the 19th century, geologists spread out across the globe, surveying and sampling, trying to correlate the rock that they found in one region with rock that they found in another. In the interest of science, yes, but also to fill the European Empire's insatiable need for coal. And in a region of eastern central India, called Gondwana, they found these ancient basins with a very particular sequence of rock from the Carboniferous up through the Cretaceous. Workers kept finding this sequence on other continents in the Southern Hemisphere, and it came to be called the Gondwana series, or Gondwana system. And in the Permian coal beds of that system, they found this distinctive giant tongue-shaped leaf fossil, which they called Glossopteris, the tongue fern, even though it's not actually a fern. That, together with a number of other plants like Philotheca, kept showing up in those coal beds in the Gondwana system whatever continent it was on, so it came to be called the Gondwana flora. What was weird about it is that they were appearing in disjointed regions. Like, we found them in southern Africa and in India, but then not in Arabia or Iran. It's like the plants had been seagoing. Now, workers reasoned correctly that that meant that these land masses had once been connected, but because the thinking at the time was that continents didn't move around laterally, they only moved up and down, what must have happened was that there were bridges of land that have since fallen beneath the seas. And maybe that's just a narrow isthmus, or maybe it's an entire expansive continent. They tried a few different names for this paleocontinent, but because its defining characteristic was the presence of the Gondwana flora, the name that stuck was Edward Seuss's Gondwanaland.